Let's read this for the last time. This is our uh, statement regarding preaching for the last time all together. Ready, read. That's the mortal sin in preaching when you bore people with the Word of God. Friends, to avoid boring our people with the Word of God, three Latin phrases, ito po, veritas platiat, veritas placiat, and veritas moviat. Again, I'm not sure about the pronunciation there. Walang guide sa aking uh, lap, sa aking mic, uh, iPhone, sa Latin. But veritas platiat means make the truth plain. Veritas placiat means make the truth movie or interesting. And then veritas moviat means make the truth moving. Make the truth moving. So this is how we excel as preachers. Make the truth plain, that's number one. Number two, make the truth interesting. And then number three, make the truth moving. Let's read what the preacher wrote. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 12, ready? Read. And to write words of truth correctly. And masters of these collections are like well-driven nails. They are given by one shepherd. So first of all, if we want to excel as preachers, number one, we need to make the truth plain. How do you make the truth plain? Well, friends, number one, it involves a thorough preparation. It involves a thorough preparation. Because, friends, if it's not plain to you, you cannot make it plain to your audience. It has to be clear to you in order for it to be clear to your audience. The preacher said in Ecclesiastes, he pondered, he searched out, he arranged many proverbs. It involves thorough preparation. Number two, making the truth plain implies crafting your words well. It implies crafting your words well. That means... Whenever you make a statement, pag-isipan mo, how do I make this statement so memorable that it becomes a quotable quote? Yan yung objective mo. How do you make it quotable quote? You know, kahit nasa Cebuano, even though I'm not Cebuano, but I try to find a way, paano ba sasabihin yan? Sometimes I just memorize without even, you know, really understanding what I'm saying. Sa Cebuano, I would say, Ayaw palabi, pagpataas, paglantaw sa imong tingos bawan. Kay dili lang nimo mahibaluan na adto ka may tumpawak sa limaw nga sarang nimong kapanaminan ang kabanyaga sa kapalaran nga imong mahiaguman. I don't understand. I just memorized it. Pero ang ganda pakinggan niya sa Cebuano. Parang ang lalim. I don't I, I don't really know what it means, you know, exactly. I have an idea what it means but not exactly what it means. It implies crafting your words well. Sa English, uh, dito sa preacher, sabi niya, the preacher sought to find delightful words and to write words of truth correctly. There are certain ways of saying things na magiging memorable, quotable quote. Ito yung tinatawag na echoing. Echoing sounds like this. People do not care how much you know, but they want to know how much you care. Yan ang echoing. You try to make statements na medyo echoing, that becomes a quotable quote. Ito namang isa, sabi dito, Our future is not determined by what we did in the past, but by what we do in the present. Ah, so meron yung sequence dito. Alright? And then, si Woodrow Wilson, I love this statement, I use this in one of my sermons. Again, ito yung reversal. Reversal or echoing. I would rather temporarily fail in a cause that would ultimately succeed than to temporarily succeed in a cause that would ultimately fail. Ang galing! Grabe! That's a quotable quote. So you try to think of a way, paano ba sasabihin ito? Ha? And then si Martin Luther, he used alliteration. Remember si Martin Luther King, I mean, when uh, he was making the declaration sa, I have a dream. Okay, I have a dream. Sabi niya, I have a dream that people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Now, that's alliteration. Color 
and then kunti. Galing. Si Richard Nixon, he used assonance. Sabi niya, let us move from the era of confrontation into the era of negotiation. Aba, naasonance yan. Sion at saka sion. It becomes memorable. And then si John F. Kennedy, very famous words, ito yung reversal or echoing, sabi ni John F. Kennedy, do not ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Ba, okay nga, no? Noong 1986, nandito ako, dumating ako sa Manila from Cebu. Timing na timing, EDSA Revolution. Pag alis ni Marcos, pre-preach ako nung Sunday na yon. And then sabi ko doon sa sermon, you know what, in America, when politicians cheat, they go to jail. In the Philippines, when politicians cheat, they go to America. Ayun, medyo may konting echoing doon. And then, si Jimmy Carter, America did not invent human rights, but in a sense, human rights invented America. Ang kaling mag-isip ng mga tao minsan pagka ganyang ano, no? Yung, you try to make a statement, and yung goal mo is to make it memorable. Alright? So, you need to think it well. You need to, it implies crafting your words well. But the number three, it includes having a clear outline. If you want to make the truth plain, friends, having an outline doesn't mean you have point one, point two, point three. Ang ibig sabihin ng having an outline, you have a clear way to go from point A to point B, from point B to point C. Meron kang clear way how to go there. Hindi yung paikot-ikot yung mga ano natin and we're just moving around the bush. Kaya it becomes, you know, it becomes foggy in the minds of uh, the listeners. Make the truth plain. Number two, if we want to excel, we need to make the truth interesting. Now, ito yung challenge. How do you make it interesting when you preach about it every year? Every year, may Christmas. Every year, may Easter. Every year, may Valentine's. Every year, may Mother's Day. Every year, may Father's Day. How do you make it interesting? Every year, ginagawa natin yan. Friends, how do you make it interesting? Number one, you need to feed your mind daily. You need to feed your mind daily. You need to be reading. Sabi nga ni uh, John Wesley, when he started the movement, the Methodist movement, meron siyang mga circuit preachers. And then he challenged his preachers and sabi niya, either read or get out of the ministry. Yan ang challenge niya. Either read or get out of the ministry. Wow. You know, if we make that as a challenge to pastors today, maraming mawawala ng pastorate. Either read or get out of the ministry. Kasi yung pastor na hindi nagbabasa, you plateau. There's nothing new coming out. It's the same way every year. Hindi na nababago. Kaya nga kailangan natin magbasa. Now, I know we don't have the luxury of time. Kaya nga minsan yung, ba, yung readings ko, nakadepende sa preaching. Kung yung preaching ko, the book of Ephesians, all my readings will be about Ephesians kasi I don't have the I don't have the uh, you know the luxury of time to read other materials. Pero kailangan naka-focus tayo. And uh, as I've said right now because uh, marami na mga libro na electronic, you just buy electronic books. Mura yan kaysa sa mga printed books. You invest on it. Marami mga libro ang talagang uh, magiging of value. Right now in my Bible, I have electronic books here. Uh, about 14,000 books through the years. You know, you just invest on it through the years. 14,000, ilagay mo lang ng $1, a month, uh, $1 per book yan. $14,000 na rin yan. And so, but then you need to invest. You need to keep on reading. Kasi doon lalawak, doon lalama, doon ma, madadagdagan yung ating kaalaman. Kaya nga tong read, eh, yung you need to feed your mind daily, I'm sorry, you need to feed your mind daily, yan, you know, kahit nasa CR ka lang, yung CR, yun know, nakaupo ka lang doon eh. Wala kang ginagawa eh. I mean, may ginagawa ka pero nakaupo ka lang, ibig sabihin. <laughs> Sayang! Magbasa ka ng daily bread. You know daily bread? One illustration a day. Daily bread lang. One illustration every day na yan. Kapatid, napakaganda. Talagang multitasking, may input, may output. No, talagang, <laughs> medyo talagang punong-puno yung oras talaga eh. You need to grow in the Word. You need to grow in the Word. 
Dito na yung facility ng Word of God eh. Kaya minsan, impress na ma-impress yung mga tao kay Suryano. Kasi Suryano, isang tanong, alam agad yung verse eh. Yun na parang, wow, memorize niya ata yung buong Biblia. Pero may monitor pala yun. Meron palang mga, ano yun, no? meron. Hindi natin alam kung live talaga lahat o ano. But, you know, you need to grow in the Word. Sometimes, nagpipreach tayo, tapos sasabihin natin, I know of a verse, uh, it's in the Bible, I know it's there, I, I just cannot remember it. Pero nando, alam ko na sa Biblia yun. Walang effect yung ganyang kapatid. Hindi ka gayon talagang nakukot mo agad. Talagang you know you you are you you you're growing in the word. Yung facility of using the word, it's a weapon. The moment you remember something, you remember that verse. We need to grow in the word as pastors. And then of course number three, you need to tell your audience something new. Yan ang pinakamahirap. How do you tell your audience something new? Hindi yung paulit-ulit lang. You know, it's something new. Again, feed your mind daily, grow in the Word, and then we can tell our audience something new. And then finally, if you want to really excel in preaching, not only make the truth plain, you need to make the truth interesting, you need, make, you need to make the truth moving. Ano ibig sabihin ng moving? Emotionally moving. Hindi lang yung mind, yung heart. Talagang naantig yung puso nila. Sabi ng preacher dito sa Ecclesiastes, the words of wise men are like what? Goads. Ano yung goading? What is goading? Yun know, yung mga shepherd, meron silang staff. Pag yung sheep gusto niyang palikod, ginogoad niya, yung parang tinutusok niya yung side para lumiko dito. That's goading. And so here, the words of wise men are like goads. You know, we guide people what direction they need to move, they need to take. Masters of these collections are like well-driven nails. You know, it's embedded in their minds. It's right there. It's driven like nails. And so friends, to make the truth moving, number one, we need to try to end with an emotional appeal. So yung sermon natin, we always try to end with an emotional appeal. Kasi remember, yung will, ito yung mind, yung heart, and then yung will. Yung will is closest to the heart. We do it because we like it. Okay? Yung will, do or don't. Yung heart is like or dislike. Yung mind is right or wrong. Ito yung nagdi-discern, ito yung nagdi-desire, ito yung nagdi-decide. The mind, the heart, and the will. Yung will natin closest to the heart. Yung mga gusto natin. Alam ng mind natin na mali, pero dahil gusto natin, ginagawa natin. A lot of times, we make those decisions because of the desires, the, the heart. Pero the desires can be redirected by a strong mind. If our minds are strong, we can redirect our desires. Kaya ang battle is always for the mind. But friends, if we want people to make those choices, we need to target the heart, the desires. Alright? We need to make an emotional appeal. And so dito na naglalaro minsan, you know, you come up with a story, personal story, yung talagang, uh, you know, those stories that are real, na talagang nangyari, and people are able to identify with it, napakabilis ng kanilang response. Again, I know sometimes denominationalism can be a, a problem here. Because now that I move among Pentecostals in Canada, sa Pentecostals, napakadali mag-design. Napakadaling pa, mga tao, altar ko, ang bilis. Pag sabi mo palang, come forward, if you want to commit your life, you want to be blessed, if you want to be prayed for, come forward, ang bilis, nag-uunahan. Sa Baptist, minsan, ang tagal. Titingin na po, sino kayo pupunta sa harapan? Ang tagal. Minsan kasi depende sa tradition natin. Eh. Now, ngayon, ang problema naman yan, Pentecost nga, punta ng punta sa harapan, tumba ng tumba, pero wala naman nababago. Parati na lang ganun. <laughs> kasi minsan, experience lang talaga. You know, just for the experience of it, yung mga Baptist naman, pag talagang nagpunta yung sa harapan, talagang decision talaga yan. Talagang matinding decision talaga yan. So again, iba-ibang tradisyon eh. But then, we need to try to make an emotional appeal. We end our sermon towards that before they make the decision, you know, emotional appeal. Number two, always make realistic applications. Itong napaka-importante. You need to bring down your sermon to the basic application that people when they go home, alam nila exactly what, what to do. Minsan yung applications natin, they're so, you know, masyadong generalized. People do not actually know what to do. Kahit din sabihin mong, read your Bible every day. Read your Bible every day. 
Sometimes, you know, read your Bible every day is not even practical. You know, some people in Canada, they wake up 5 o'clock in the morning to catch the bus at 6 o'clock. They come home at 9 o'clock in the evening. Magluluto pa yan. Kaya yung to read your Bible every day, napakahirap isipin yan. You need to bring it down to a level where they can understand a specific application. How about if you'll say, brothers and sisters, you know, if you read the Bible, pulpit speed, from Genesis to Revelation, read it, pulpit speed, redirecto, non-stop, it will take you 71 hours and 42 minutes. 71 hours and 42 minutes straight reading from Genesis to Revelation. Divide that by 365 days. Friends, it will take you 12 minutes a day. Just 12 minutes a day. And you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Friends, do you have 12 minutes a day? Isa ibang babae, 12 minutes, isang kilay pa lang yan. 12 minutes na yan, isang kilay pa lang. I'm sure you have 12 minutes. Make your applications realistic. And then finally, remember, anointing is the key. Remember, anointing is the key. Anointing is the key. Wala na pong idadagdag just anointing, kapatid. That's your walk with God. That's when your life is consistent with what you preach. The Lord Jesus Christ, before He sent out His disciples to preach and to cast out demons, ano sabi niya? Let's read this together. The last time, ready, read. That they might be So, before he sent them out to preach and then drive out demons, friends, sabi dito, that they might be with him. With him, that's the principle here. Your anointing depends on your intimacy with God. Wala na po tayong ibang formula dyan for anointing. It's your intimacy with God. It's how close you are in your walk with God. So friends, in your manual, we have included there how to evaluate a sermon. Just go through that. Nandiyan na po yung how to evaluate a sermon. But let me just end with these words. And in fact, I'd like for all of us to read this together. Tayo pong lahat. Ready? Read. Pray yourself empty. Read yourself full. Write yourself clear. And when you preach, let yourself go. So yan po ang ating uh, Apollos Project Level 3, Homiletics. Pray yourself empty. Read yourself full. Write yourself clear, and when you preach, let yourself go. Brothers and sisters, thank you very much for your time and attention. That's the Apollos Project.